everybody, and welcome to Let's Look at Magic the Gathering Duels of the Planeswalkers 2013. Why? Why are you looking at a Magic the Gathering game six months after it came out? Because fuck you, that's why. I'm sorry, I take that bad. Not back, not fuck you. I'm looking at it because I just got it in the Steam sale, and in my life I have actually had a certain affinity and a certain experience with the trading card game Magic the Gathering, or competitive collectible trading card game. I'm not even sure what you call these anymore, but when I was a kid, an adolescent, maybe a pre-teen and early teenage years, I was pretty into Magic the Gathering. My uncle and I used to play games together, lived out in the country, so I didn't really get into much of the competitive scene. Uh, and this was before the days when the internet was, you know, as fast or games like this really existed. Uh, so, uh, I kind of fell out of favor for it, but I decided, you know, this went on sale for five bucks in the Steam sale. Normally it was, uh, ten dollars, so... Saved myself five dollars, got a smug sense of, uh, self-satisfaction out of that. And I've been playing this kind of rigorously over the past few days, despite it being the Christmas holidays. Uh, I put about four hours into this game so far, which is pretty crazy. So suffice it to say, I am into Magic the Gathering again, at least in an electronic sense. So, before we get started, we might as well just go over the, some of the features here. And if, don't worry, if you're not familiar with Magic the Gathering, we'll go over the basics. You should be worried if you are familiar with Magic the Gathering, because inevitably, I am going to F something up. So in terms of... Uh, features here. We have the multiplayer mode where you can play against people online. This is probably where most people are going to spend most of their time, at least if they have friends who have this game, and considering it went on sale recently, I assume that a lot of people will. Uh, you can also make a custom game. There's downloadable content that largely consists of decks, which I'm not really that interested in. There's also a deck manager which we can go to here, and as you can see, if we boot up the deck manager, we've got several decks like uh, Crosswinds, Born of Flame, Pack Instinct, each one associated with a different kind of land. Uh, but we're going to load up our fire deck here, because that's probably my most used one. Open up deck manager. And you can see we can either unlock the full deck, check out our premium foil deck. These will all take us to DLC. Uh, as well, we can actually, you know, kind of mess with our cards a little bit. So we can take a look at our cards uh, that we've unlocked. These have been unlocked through, like, battles. So if we take a look at, like, Flame Slash. Flame Slash deals four damage to target creature. We could add this to our deck if we want to, which I want to do. And we'll add this to the deck as well. In any case, there is a little bit, what I'm trying to get at here is there's just a little bit of um, deck management here. I'm not sure what's up with this. Um, these are these are locked cards, I guess, that we have to unlock by beating uh, more enemies in the game. Uh, but there is a little bit of deck management in this game, but I've heard from people who are more into Magic the Gathering than myself uh, that there is not really much in the way of deck building. It's mostly just like pre-made decks that you can alter in some ways. Uh, we're going to quit without saving here. Uh, but I'm not really into the deck management that much. I'm just kind of into the actual game itself. So we're going to start our campaign here. Well, not start our campaign. We're going to continue our campaign. I'm actually a fair bit into it. There's a little bit of an overarching story that goes on. We're just going to dip set out of Anne Orlando here. Fuck you, archers who shoot javelins. And we're going to head into, um... Oh, no. Don't forget the... What's the name of the forest? Darkroot Forest. Okay, it's been a while since I played Dark Souls. Forgive me. Anyway, so we've been uh, kind of traversing these realms here, and the ba basic premise of the game is we are playing as a planeswalker, Northern Lion, who absolutely is styled after myself. There's a number of pre-rendered avatars you can choose from. Uh, so we've been working our way through, like, all these realms. You know, we started in Chandelar, which I believe is M. Bison's evil organization. Then we went to, like, this dark realm, Innistrad. Uh, and in each one, there is an overarching boss that we have to defeat. So, you know, I defeated this forest douchebag here. Um, and Dariel from Diablo 2. Lead singer from Fallout Boy. Actually, I guess he's the bassist. Uh, and now we're on the uh, fourth one here, which is actually going to load into the background here just quickly. Now, in order to fight the boss, so our boss here is a Johnny, we have to defeat some of these encounters or uh, opponents. Now, the encounters are optional, but they're also annoying as fuck. They always have some kind of gimmick to them, so we're just going to do like a standard fight here uh, against Alara, and we're going to see how this works out. So we can see, this is, uh, or sorry, I guess this is Nephorox who we're fighting. He's got... Uh, a deck with great card synergy, slow creature size, or small creature size, I should say. And you know what, why don't we stick with uh, Born of Flame. I've had really good luck with this pack so far, I've got some good cards unlocked, so we're going to start our duel here. This will load in, every time you load in, you get some nice art like this, as you might expect from the Magic cards. Now, let's explain the very basics of Magic the Gathering for people who are not familiar. Basically, we start with seven cards, we can choose to uh, get rid of this hand if we want to and draw seven new ones, but every time we do this, after our first attempt, we'll draw less cards. So I can draw for no charge here, but if I draw again, then I get six, five, four, etc, etc, until we can't draw anymore. Uh, so there's a few different kinds of cards in Magic. These are basically our mana, uh, but we call them land in this game, and there's several different kinds of land, but in our deck we only have red land, which is mountain. Every card that you can see, there's creatures here, uh, has a mana cost associated with it, or a land cost associated with it. So this requires two red land, 
Uh, let's take a look at this one. This requires three of any color as well as four red lands. So seven land overall. Uh, and these are going to get tapped every time they're used, and they're going to untap at the end of our turn. So this is a turn-based card game. Uh, he is going to start here, so I'm just doing my best to explain it. Now, our, the main way that we're going to be doing uh, our game here, if I keep the hand and let him start, is that the way the process is basically going to work, he's going to play a land card almost every turn if he has the opportunity to, as, and I am as well, to build up our mana pool. And then we're going to start casting creatures and spells to do damage to one another. We each start with 20 health, as you can see over here. Whoever gets down to zero first is the loser. So let's see what card he played here. Cathedral of War enters the battlefield tapped, and every time he taps it, it adds one to his mana pool. So I guess this guy doesn't actually need land. Uh, instead, he has this, like, foil card, uh, and every time he taps this, it's going to basically give him uh, a land proxy. So every turn, he'll build up one land. So this is a very valuable card. We're going to have to do things the old-fashioned way and send out our land one by one. So your turn's divided into a few phases. But we're not really going to see that until both of us uh, get some mana pool that we can use ourselves. Oh, he's going to get a ton of mana, actually. So, we're just going to keep popping down mountains here. So this is the main phase where you can play your lands. Uh, and now we have the opportunity to also cast a creature, because we actually do have two land cards now, which and our minimum creature cost for this is two. So we're going to send out our Pyre Charger here. The Pyre Charger has haste, which means he can attack on the first turn. Additionally, he has an ability. So every time we tap one of these land cards down here, he can get plus one attack and plus zero defense until the end of the turn. So what we can do with this guy is basically get a huge land pool, uh, put him out here, and then tap like seven lands. This will give him eight attack, one defense. We'll talk about attack and defense a little bit more later uh, once he sends some creatures into the fold. But for now, just know left number, attack, right number, defense. So we're going to send out our Pyre Charger here. With haste, that means he can attack on the first turn. Normally... Uh, creatures have summoning sickness, which means they have to wait a turn to attack unless they have haste, which this guy does. So we're going to attack, we're going to do damage directly to Nephorox, and this should take him from 20 down to 19. Presumably. And indeed, the damage has been done there. We're going to click continue. Every card, by the way, I, I really like the way this game does the interface. You just use the mouse wheel to zoom in on this and see it, and you can see the art looks quite nice, and there's also, you know, flavor text that comes down here on the bottom as well, if you're into that sort of thing. I'm not into the overarching Magic the Gathering style narrative, I'm just into the kind of well-balanced and frantic uh, gameplay as well as strategic. I love any kind of trading card game that involves a lot of strategy, so we're gonna see what this card is. So by tapping this, he can sacrifice Evolving Wild, search your library for a basic land card, and put it into the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle your library. Okay, so this guy's gimmick, there is, like, thematic elements that tie together a lot of these uh, fights. This guy's gimmick is apparently that he doesn't really use that much land. Instead, he has, like, these land proxies, which is weird. Anyway, we're going to send out another mountain card here. Now, you can see one of the things I really like about the interface in this game. I think I botched this already because I can't activate this ability. That was stupid. But one of the things I really like about this game is that when you have the opportunity to do or to use a card, it'll glow. So we can't use any of these cards right now. Which means, well, right now is different because we're in a different phase of the game. But we couldn't use any of them before because all of these require more mana. So there's a really good way of the game uh, to actually just kind of explain to you or demonstrate to you what the heck you can do. So we're just going to tap and attack here. There is an ability that I can use on this guy. I could have given him much more attack power this time, uh, but I was too slow because I was talking. You do have to utilize like the stop timer function in this game, but I like that the game has a short timer because it actually allows you, uh, like online the game actually moves quickly <laughs> as opposed to a game like Hero Academy. Okay, so he sent out a creature. Creature has lifelink. I don't know what this does. I can probably get more info here. Lifelink. Damage dealt by something with lifelink also causes its controller to gain that much life. I don't like that, but at least this doesn't have haste. So this can't do any uh, damage to us on this turn. It can't do anything on this turn. But every time this thing attacks and does damage, he's going to gain life, which is bad for me, obviously. So we're going to send out our mountain card, uh, and then we're going to take a look at what we've got here. So I can send out the Furnace Whelp. So there's two things I could do on this turn. I could either tap the shit out of uh, my land right here, Give my Pyre Charger plus one attack, which would give him uh, five and one total if I tapped it all. But then, he would just block with this guy, and we'll talk about that once we get a little bit further in and start doing that. What I'm actually going to do is just use all four of my lands to send out our Furnace Whelp. The reason being, Furnace Whelp has the same ability as Pyre Charger, we won't be able to use it this turn. Uh, but, he's also flying, and only- wait, is this thing flying? No. Uh, so, creatures with flying can only be blocked by creatures with flying, or creatures with a special ability called reach. So by sending this out, we're basically saying, okay, we're going to be guaranteed able to do, uh, like, two damage or more to you per turn. So we are going to attack this turn. No, we're not. Wait, are we? Yes, we are. If Here's the deal. We're going to choose to attack with this. He's 1-1. One, one. 
he has two options. He can either take that damage on the chin and go down to 17, which is what I expect he will do, uh, or he can block with his vampire. The way this will work, he's 2-1, I'm 1-1. The damage is done simultaneously, so I would do one damage, which would take down his defense. At the same time, he would do two damage, which would take down my defense. Both of these cards would die because their defense went down to zero or lower, and they would be removed from the battlefield, and only this card would be left here. So I'm basically giving myself the potential to sacrifice this card, but I don't think he's going to block it. He is going to block it. Okay. I didn't think he was going to block it because his card is more valuable. Ah, but he has um, an instant card. So target creature gets plus one, plus one, and gains first strike until the end of the turn. So this is going to give him the ability to basically just destroy this guy free of charge. I did not see that coming. Now his defense is a little bit higher, and he has first strike, which means damage is not done at the same time. So I am dead. That was a poor decision on my part, but I am still winning here. And we're going to see what this guy's going to get up to. Playing another Swamp card. I really need some land, by the way. So we have a Creature, Skeleton, Exalted, uh, Duty Bound Dead. For four mana, he can regenerate Duty Bound Dead in the case that it is uh, killed. I don't know what Exalted means. Actually, maybe we should take a look at that. So more info. Exalted. Whenever one of your creatures attacks alone, it gets plus one, plus one for each card with Exalted you have on the battlefield. That could be annoying in the future, but for now it's okay. So we're going to have another Duty Bound Dead here. Alright, now <laughs> this uh, vampire is going to become substantially more annoying. And he has Pacifism, which is terrible, which is going to enchant my creature and make it so that it cannot attack or block. That is super annoying. Uh, we're going to try to get rid of that spell as soon as possible, because now I can't do anything. Like, I can't block this attack. This guy's going to get plus one from both of these guys, because it's Exalted and it's attacking alone. And it is going to do a substantial amount of damage to me, which is super annoying. So that's going to do 5 damage, and beyond that, I can't block anything, so I'll just let this happen. Uh, he's going to receive that 5 damage himself as health. So I really need to get this creature the hell out of the situation as soon as possible, because this is super annoying. Anyway, so he's at 26, I'm at 15. We could end up losing this fairly quickly. Uh, but I played another land card. Now we have a number of creatures we can send out. Uh, and some instants as well, so let's see what we have here. Fire Servant has a special ability where uh, if a red instant or sorcery deals damage, it will do double that damage instead, which is actually really good. Uh, and also, this has the ability to block a, a lot of damage. More damage than this thing would actually... Actually, that thing would create a lot of damage because of the extra exalted abilities here. Um, we have Magma Phoenix, which is 3 and 3, and when it dies, it deals 3 damage to each creature and each player, which is really good. So what I could do is just block this with Magma Phoenix, and that'll destroy all the other creatures on the, on the field. Uh, but Fire Servant is really useful as well, but I think now we just want to get Magma Phoenix out there. My thinking is, again, if he blocks, I'll block all the damage, sacrifice Magma Phoenix, and wipe his uh, pathetic creatures off the field. Oh, it, all right, it does three damage to each creature in each player, so it'll hurt me as well. So there's another defensive creature here. This is getting real annoying real fast. This guy, I've never played him before, proving to be surprisingly difficult. So far, the game has been very, very noob-friendly. Oh man, he has a lot of exalted creatures here, but Magma Phoenix I think is the best of both worlds here. It'll wipe out my creature as well, uh, but it will also, if I just block this, I need to block this. Um, so he's just tapping these to basically get this power up here, which is going to give him like 7 attack. Uh, but sacrificing my Furnace Whelp is not that big of a deal, because... Uh, it can't attack anyway due to pacifism. Anyway, I should mention something here as I'm about to block this. He's 7 and 6, I'm 3 and 3. The extra 4 damage after taking my defense out of his attack won't do damage to me unless he has an ability called Trample, I think. So, these are just things you learn as you play. And again, I've only been playing for 3 or 4 hours and I've enjoyed it a lot so far, so I found it fairly easy to get back into this. This will kill Magma Phoenix, and if all goes well, destroy all the creatures on the battlefield except for this new 0 and 4 one he just sent out. They'll also do 3 damage to me and 3 damage to him. Uh, but unfortunately, now I have 12 health and he has 30, so we're not in uh, the best position here. Now, does this thing fly? It's a defender, which means it can't attack, and it's exalted, which we all know is annoying. Uh, now we do have the ability again to send out another Magma Phoenix. We could also send out a Fire Servant or a Fire Elemental. Uh, I'm going to go with the Magma Phoenix again because it is going to be flying, which means it's going to be very difficult to block. Uh, we really need, we still need some more land, but uh, the Fire Servant I'll probably send out next, because then I can do a lot of damage with this sorcery. Because as you can see, Flame Wave here deals 4 damage to target player and each creature he or she controls. So I could basically wipe out whatever he's going to put on the field. So he's going to put out a Flying Dagger Claw Imp, which cannot block, which is unfortunate for him. It doesn't have haste either. Uh, so I won't be able to block that because it'll kill Magma Phoenix, but for now, okay, another... 
Tormented Soul can't block and is unblockable, so that's annoying as well, but at least... I mean, he's basically just doing one extra damage per turn with that guy. We didn't pick up an island, we did pick up a Pyromancer, which is again, basically one damage per turn. Uh, so what can we play here? We can play basically anything except Flame Wave. I think I'm going to send out the Fire Servant though. Although the Flame Elemental I think is... Uh, but the Flame... Sorry, Fire Elemental cannot actually block this guy anyway. So if there's any way I could get that guy... Like I could block that guy without being killed myself, believe me, I would do it. Uh, but I think we're just going to have to kind of try to get that guy killed regardless. Uh, but most of these guys are unblockable, right? Just Defender Exalt. Okay, we're going to send out Fire Elemental. We probably won't last long enough to make this work for us. I mean, it's not really going super well so far. And again, I apologize if you're really good at Magic the Gathering and I am just infuriating you right now. Uh, that's the way the cookie crumbles, unfortunately. For you, at least. For me, I'm having a good time with this game so far. So we're going to continue onwards here. He's not going to get any more lifesteal, which is great, but he does have, you know, more health than he started with, whereas I am down to merely 12 away from death. And we cannot block this, so... We're just going to let it go. We can't block it because it's a flying creature. Sadly, he has Exalted as well, which I forgot, so he's going to be able to do a ton of damage here. Five is maybe not a ton, but uh, still enough to be annoying as hell. And we really kind of need uh, one more land to pop up in our hand so that we can use this card right here. Well, that's going to do it. So we'll pop that. Then we can use Flame Wave, uh, which is really useful. So we'll just tap all of our mana to use Flame Wave. Obviously, we're going to deal damage to this player right here. It's going to destroy all of his creatures. Deal 4 damage to him and give us a window to actually do 8 damage ourselves. So this is what I really like about Magic the Gathering is that there's all these swings. Like, the game usually starts really slow and people usually don't get into big opening barrages or anything like that. There's no Blitzkrieg involved in Magic the Gathering usually, at least from the little I played of this game. Uh, and my experience as a much younger Northern Lion. Northern Cub, really. Uh, things get more fast and furious towards the end of the game, which is a lot of fun. Okay, so equipped creature is unblockable and has Shroud. I should actually look at this to see what Shroud does. Again, I love the interface here. Something with Shroud can't be the target of spells or abilities. Got it. So we'll see what he plays. Now, he's still got two land left, but he doesn't have any creatures to send out, unfortunately for him. Uh, we have some kind of sorcery here. Flame Slash deals four damage to target creature. That's really good. Why can't we use this? Because there's no creatures on the field. Okay, otherwise, this is really good, though. Four damage to target creature is basically just going to allow us to kill a target creature. Uh, Fire Servant, we are going to send out here. And then we're going to do another 8 damage. And we could actually turn this one around and win now, because we're going to go into our attack phase. And in doing so, we're going to take him down to exactly the amount of health we have left. And again, this is what makes part of this, this game so engaging. And I don't mean this game is in this video game. I mean this game is in this card game that's been around for like 20 years at this point. Uh, there, it's really well balanced, and there's, there's lots of... Ah, haste is not good. Uh, there's lots of, of shifts in power as well, which is, uh, or shifts in momentum, I should say, which is really what makes it engaging and you don't know what's going on until the very end. So he is going to do an attack here. I just have to take a look at this. Oh, stop timer. Stop timer. Okay. Uh, I have to look. Do I have to continue? I can't block. Why can't I block? He's going to do a lot of damage to me. We got to kill. Oh, now I can block. Okay. I just want to take a look at this card. Equipped creature is unblockable and has shroud. Is he unblockable? No, he's not. This will kill me. But it will also get rid of him, and next turn I'll be able to do 8 damage, which should kill him. So just by blocking this right here, uh, that should prevent me from taking damage, and additionally, uh, it will destroy him next turn. It will destroy his creature, and next turn I'll be able to uh, just kill him, I believe. Sadly, we don't have anything with haste, but uh, we might as well send out the Prodigal Pyromancer, I guess. Or how much does the, the Whelp does too? Alright, maybe we'll send out the, the Furnace Whelp here. And then we will do these two attacks in our combat phase. I guess we can send out Prodigal Pyromancer as well. So that if we somehow don't kill him this turn, next turn we can F his day up. Uh, we'll send out these two, which should be enough. That's 8 damage. So unless he has some kind of sorcery that can block me... Uh, this will be the end of the match here, and I will destroy him. Doesn't look like he blocked anything, so that's going to take him down to minus one, which means success for me. That didn't look like it was going too well, but in the end, I turned it around. Uh, we can see our stats. We unlocked a card here as well, which you do every time. We also unlocked a deck, and this is mixed land decks, which I've just really gotten into on the third or fourth uh, realm here. In any case, uh, that's going to do it. It's not really an exhaustive look at Duels of the Planeswalker 2013. Just consider this, if you want a TLDR... I thought this was a wolf, but actually it's like King from Tekken. Um, 
If you want a too long didn't read of, or too long didn't watch, I guess, of Magic the Gathering Duels of the Planeswalkers 2013, let's look at if you are, uh, if you have a passing or casual interest in Magic the Gathering and you've been, maybe been out of the game for a little while, you're worried, oh man, I know this game can be incomprehensible at times. This is a really good way to get back into it. I've been really having a good time so far. I, I've played more of this game this week than any other game. Uh, which is pretty remarkable for me, considering I just bought it on a whim. So if you're interested, uh, keep your eye out on the Steam sale. It seems to routinely go pretty low, but, you know, $10 is actually a fairly fair investment for this game in the first place. But if you can get it cheaper, why not? And, of course, the multiplayer is something that I will be looking to check out in the future. But in any case, as always, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.